All right, so the next step we're going to do here is to actually test the remote view connection itself across the internet. We've got it on the local network, we verified it, we saw the video locally on the network, we've done the port forward, now we need to test it outside. For this part, you're going to need access to something that's not on the local network that you're sitting on. Uh, things you could do is if you had a laptop that had some sort of Verizon Wi-Fi wireless you could get on the laptop and try it that way uh, you can make a call back to your home office and have someone there at the home office try to connect to your site or you can call us here at Spice Center Security and have one of us try to connect to your site but either way most routers are not smart enough to let you go from inside the network out to the internet from the internet back to the same site and then try to go back into a DVR that's already on the network. They're just not that smart. They don't work that way. So the first part of the information you're going to need is your external IP address. Up until now, we've been talking about internal IP addresses, but a router has two sides. It has an external IP. If you try to connect to an internal IP address from outside the network it's not going to work because those IP addresses don't exist. Those the, the internal IP addresses exist on an internal network. The external IP addresses in, exist on an external network. So if you go to a site called whatismyip.com it will up at the top here it's going to spit back your entire IP address. Um, it's actually a set of four numbers and what that is is that is your most external IP address that's available now I say most because it is possible that you have multiple routers you could have routers behind routers behind routers so anyway that will spit out the most external IP address once you have that you can just make a call or get on the laptop if you can get on a diff different network and open up the remote viewer And again, we're going to add a connection. Now this time, uh, this was our connection from earlier, this time we're going to be putting in the external numbers. Again, they're going to be something other than 192. They're probably a 67 dot something, a 12 dot something, a uh, 66 dot something, 7071. Those are your Verizon, Time Warner, you know, whatever type. Uh, IP addresses and go ahead just stick in your number here and add it at this point you should be able to you know click connect and connect to it if you can't get video remotely um, either you get a connection timeout or you get no video it's time to troubleshoot the port forward itself um, Double check the numbers in the port forward. You know it works internally through the, the network, so you know it's broadcasting. You know it can get up to the router. If you can't get past the router, just by sheer logic, your problem is in the router somewhere. Uh, so that'd be the first thing to do is double check those port forward numbers. The next potential thing you can do is if the port forward numbers look completely correct, if you go back into the router's interface under the system summary or under the status page it'll list your WAN IP notice right here that this particular router has a WAN IP that is an internal network IP um, this WAN IP should be the same number as your what is my IP. If they're not, that means you have more than one router. You have a modem that goes to a router that goes to something else that goes to this router. So the next step would be to connect to the router that's one level up, run the port forward again, and then retry. Um, you don't see that configuration too often. Your most likely place to see something like that would be in a 
hotel motel environment or possibly a restaurant environment long and the short is somebody probably did that on purpose there's a there's an office network and then they're splitting off a sub network to provide public access to wireless internet and they want to protect the two networks so they create this sub network but anyway that's the next step is go ahead connect to it remotely if you can see it remotely then you're good you're good across the internet and that completes actually the second of the three steps. If your customer has a static external IP, if you remember the dynamic IPs hop around the network, the static IPs are, they stay put once they're placed and the internet is a network. Um, if you have a static IP, you're done. Your customer can use that same IP address over and over and over again. Just make sure they're using the external address, not the internal address. However, that's kind of an unusual configuration. Probably, I don't know, 75% of your customers have a dynamic external IP address. Internet service providers, they buy a block, a block of IPs, and whenever somebody connects to the Internet, they just give them a new IP address. So that will be the third portion of this, is configuring what's known as DDNS. Uh, we're going to be configuring the dynamic uh, DNS service.